Hello, Internet. I'm Jackie Fox, and previously I had thought that OBS was only for streamers. I didn't realize that it could do, like, screen and window recording, that it was... Well, I did know that it was open software, so therefore it would be free. So now I don't have to worry about time limits screwing with my video continuity when I am trying to record something. And it also makes me a lot more able to stream or to do videos in a higher resolution because my best recording option isn't to do it on my phone because of that 10 minutes happens to become in happens to come in a knockdown drag out match. Well, you know, I can't really like pause it. What what happens in the in the downtime, the 10 seconds in between? You know how to anyways. <clears throat> Today is going to be a test of that function. It is going to be an unedited video recorded straight from that. Obviously, I still have my microphone, so it, it works with that pretty instantaneously. But the other thing you might notice is that I'm using a different emulator than you might be used to, and that I'm a fairly low rank player. So the other thing that I'm testing out here in this video is LD Player. LD Player is pretty lightweight. Um, it has probably, uh, in terms of what I really care about and use, it has about the same functionality as Bluestacks, um, which was a, a major issue that I had with Google Play Games. The other real issue that I had with Google Play Games was that it didn't seem to work very well on my computer and wasn't... It, wasn't even functional on older computers and by the end of this video I'll have a conclusion on whether or not this works on older computers and we'll be able to test that theory but for the purposes of this video we're just seeing how it goes and I've got to say I've stress tested this harder than this in that you know as you'll notice I'm not really sure what happens when I switch between these tabs necessarily. I'm not sure if this works exactly the same as it would be on a phone, but I should be able to switch between two different uh, accounts on two different clients. Anyways, the majority of this video, because I've noticed that there are a lot of players um, that have responded positively to what essentially are my video ads that are giving out my friend code. like. Close to 70 people have done that so far. So I'm 30 people away from choosing an audience member to get some free viz. So um, let's hope that happens. That would be really cool, I think. Just very neat to kind of take a system that I don't think was really meant to benefit most players. It was definitely meant, meant to benefit new players. And they're giving you guys a lot of stuff. And I don't think that a lot of people really understand the new player perspective because most of the people who are like talking about the game right now are old pros that have done this for a while and they don't really know what it's like to start out right now. And to be fair to Gumi, they've got a, a, a major hurdle to overcome, I would say. In, I mean, now the, the standard is going to slowly become 140 and that is, that's a long ways to go. So they've got to make getting to 120, getting to 140 a lot easier. Anyways, oh, that is, other than that flicker, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty sexy. I like it. Um, okay, so this account is maybe like four or five days old. Um, I've been kind of doing a little bit of stuff with it uh, every day. Just, just basically like getting through some missions on manual that uh, he wasn't able to complete. And, you know, he's going through exams right now. <laughs> in what sounds like a grueling multi-month process. So uh, I'm happy to take a little heat off his back so that he can do well in his studies. But um, one of the things that you want to do, this isn't first, but one thing I want you to know is that this is a system that you want to make a priority to get to and to get characters saved. You get them in here, you fully clear the missions by doing all of the extra like prerequisite you know stuff all the stars get all the stars for these missions and then you'll get a check mark and i didn't mean to click on that but this actually loads really quickly in between stuff even when i'm like streaming it i've only seen it crash 
twice. I've only seen the game crash in it once. No, wait, that's what I mean by crashing. It didn't entirely crash. I've seen the app crash twice. Anyways, um, which is a lot, which is way better than Google. Well, no, Google Play Games didn't actually crash at all, but it just ran like it was going to lag out of existence. Um, anyways, there's five of these, so do that. And then this skip all button is, oh, no, sorry, six. I'll unlock that one today. Press the skip all button. It'll take about 300. It will take exactly 320 energy to do all of these runs. But you're probably going to generate at least 120 energy while you're asleep. So when you wake up, grab that 200 energy that's probably sitting in your uh, in your missions. And you now have 320 to knock that out. And then go about your day. Let that more energy build up and worry about the stuff you got to worry about. Probably breakfast. Um, but when you come back to the game on that first day... Or, well, anyways, when you come back to the game, when you're playing the game on your first day, first, second day, um, one thing you're going to notice is a bunch of the beginner's pulls are kind of rigged in your favor. The stuff that specifically says beginners. I'm not saying that they give you better luck on other stuff. You're going to have the same luck as us pulling on banners. But you are going to have several banners that will give you, like, Insta 99s. And this is going to save you a lot of awakening materials on those units. However... You still have to awaken their jobs. You're going to get most of the materials to awaken their jobs. And if you can get up to level 6, you'll also start getting this stuff. And this stuff is crucial. Or, yeah, yeah, this stuff is important for their EX jobs. And then you're going to get some stuff for some of their higher level, like 99 stuff. So you want to do that first. Once you've got the jobs unlocked, you can go in there with some JP and quickly... Pretty easily get some JP. If you have any, if you've collected any of the free vision cards that give JP, that's good. Actually, oh no, <laughs> that's right, I never built that. Okay, um, so you know, you can run them through here. Don't forget to use Ovalite. This is the good stuff. They give you some of that early on. Look at that, 1,000% up. It, uh, it's ridiculous. So you can get a lot of JP on these guys. Just don't forget to set your eggs. If you're doing one run at a time, you want somebody with this VC. That's going to give your whole party 50% JP up. I wouldn't necessarily tell you to buy it anymore because that effect is not as necessary as it was before Ovalite. Ovalite has kind of changed things a bit. So get them JP, finish off those challenge boards. Now they can use all of their, all but one of their attacks at, and all but two of them will be at their highest power. Um, set some good passives. And now you almost certainly, with your team of 99s, have enough power to beat, you know, the level sixes of this stuff. You can almost definitely get into this stuff. You could even start doing some events, maybe. The brutal difficulty might be a little hard. You can do some of the more basic stuff. And you can certainly do some of this stuff. Now, all of these, you're really probably doing... Event medals are cool because you can buy some stuff out of the event shops. But you want to look at the description. Elven gloves. Gloves. That'll tell you what piece of equipment you are farming from these. Some of them have two. There's a lot of them. Um, these are mainly for story, though. So if you want to get some background story on some people, that's how you do it. Uh, this is one that I highly recommend to new players. Let's go ahead and blow some energy on it. They give you a lot of skip tickets early on, too. And it's been really easy to get, like, if you're willing to spend maybe 2,000 viz, you can get, like, I don't know, 1,000 of each skip ticket and, like, 100 or 200 pots or something. It's ridiculous. Um, you're aiming for about 64 of each of these recipes, but specifically you want the smart coat the most. I don't know why. Eh, might as well do it with the JP team. Um, but... 
kind of the next thing after you have that because that's going to be your basic armor this will not particularly well but this will cover your bases in terms of armor you'll be a little bit inflexible but every unit that you will have will be able to equip one of these two things as armor so next you probably want to go for a weapon or an accessory um personally especially for high critical units i like the thornlet as your accessory um, I think I really like the other accessories that are available this way. There aren't many either. So pick out your weapons for kind of the team that you want to make. If you have picked an element, each one of these characters has their own element. Lightning, fire, ice, dark, wind... Not great, not the same series as these, even though it's hers. Yeah, she has that silver text. They have the gold text. Gold text are the ones that are really good. Silver text, not so much. Etra is growing on me, actually, as strike is becoming a thing, but not great, particularly. You're, you're going to want to focus on these. Also, there's a, there's a water one coming out in like four months. Dia, who is a fan favorite that people have been waiting on for a while. Um, these have pretty decent rewards, is my memory. And if you haven't played them before... Well, okay. Here's the other thing. You can unlock one thing per day. For free. So if you're kind of diligent about this, you can you can get a bunch of stuff unlocked. Um, but I'm still kind of doing this, so I'm not even going to use that free key for today. I don't think. Well. I might as well see... But I can probably learn everything that I need to from... No? Didn't learn very much from that. Okay. Well, this will be the key for the day. Job level 60. I think I can do that. This might be tough. Oh, this is another thing. The milestone system gives you a lot of items for... Leveling up limit breaks, leveling up uh, the the abilities on trust master rewards, and leveling up the, the esper that corresponds to the element that you get the milestone rewards for. You get milestone rewards for clearing it with a party of just that element. You can bring a companion to succeed in these if you want, if you need, although that will conflict with this. Um, so you can clear it this way at first with a five person team with your element of choice and then come back with whatever you want to do with a you know your weak element. Say you didn't build earth, uh, you can come back with an earth friend that's really OP and and take care of this like that way. That's going to get you a lot of resources. They're going to help you out. That's probably not like a early on thing that you need to worry about, especially since you aren't going to be able to field a lot of elemental teams early on. But if you do lean into one element. Um, Make a party for that element, even if it's a little bit weaker, even if you have to use like two MR units that aren't built up. Because if you can get those other two or three to be strong enough to carry them, then you can start collecting those, at least for that one element. It is uh, worthwhile, for sure. Uh, in terms of collecting other things and what you should get, they give you a lot of awakening materials early on. But the things that you're definitely going to need more of you're probably going to want to unlock this quest and do it three times per day. It's going to drop a lot of stuff. This is basically like everything that the old rooms dropped, but three a day. Well, I mean, they were three a day too, but like they consolidated four rooms into just this one. And they also consolidated an, uh, two rooms into or three, three rooms into this one. This one gives you even a larger variety of stuff. This is basically your upgrading equipments package, upgrading characters, upgrading equipment, but also trust... Well, trust masters are equipment, yes, okay. Uh, trust rune stuff, and you have vision card leveling stuff. So, like, doing these quests, I know these are, like... People think of them as being the trust rune quests, and I guess they are, and I guess that's how the game refers to them, but really... The thing that you're going to run out of, because they give you a lot of this stuff, you're going to run out of a lot of this really fast. Books, maybe. 
Um, but definitely these are going to run out really quickly. So your early game, you're going to find yourself wanting to farm these. And these are dead simple. These are very easy missions. You can probably get them even before you fully max out your boards for your initial characters. Uh, on Mondays, all of these are 2x. But usually it's just one per day. On Mondays, none of these are 2x. That's usually one per day with one of the weekend days having... Uh, or no, I'm sorry. This is two per day. That's the thing. These are not... Just just don't do it. Just don't do it. They've never been worthwhile. These are great. Um, I would try to unlock one of these. You'll probably have to manual it, especially when your first couple days of the game. Um, it's going to be pretty difficult. But like a lot of... Not these. Unfortunately, these don't really trade well. But like this stuff can all be traded either parallel or down. One of these, farming one of these, and you get like maybe three or four per run. That can be traded into, um, let's say you get four. That trades into eight yellows. That trades into 16 purples, which trades into 32 blues. Blues can only really be farmed in story. You may get two blues per run. So this is two, well, no, I'm sorry. This is one run of this mission versus like 16 or 32 or whatever I just said runs. Okay, I don't know what that was. Um, versus 32 runs uh, of a story quest. So like these are highly valuable and trade down incredibly well. I don't remember if these trade down necessarily. But I think they trade across, and you're going to find yourself running out of sword a lot. So you're going to find yourself trading for sword a lot, I think. Uh, same for these. Like, basically anything where sword is an option, just because of how many sword units there are, you're going to need more sword. So a lot of your tickets early on are going to go into that as well. Hmm. Build up your vision cards. The units that you're going to be largely building early on, since they have no real synergy with each other, you may not use them all for long term, but I guarantee you it's worth investing in them because the game has done all the hard work for you. Now you just have to push it over the line with the easy stuff. I mean, at least in terms of 99, you'll want to 120 them and 140 them, and the game certainly doesn't do that for you yet. Maybe it eventually will for new players as we move forward, but... One of the things that's going to stick with your account and going to be the best long-term investment are VCs. Uh, so getting some, like, this one wasn't necessarily a good example. Um, it's a cool job-based PC, though. And my dude likes Luartha, so, okay. I accept it. Uh, this has a rainbow party effect. This party effect is not constrained to a single element, and it was a free card when it came out. So it's a pretty good choice uh, as you're starting out because it's certainly not the most powerful vision card, but it's incredibly flexible, especially having uh, both attack and magic on it. Now, you may not necessarily get these cards depending on when you're starting, but acquired JP, that's always good. Um, but these type of cards are usually really good. There's a lot of slash units in the game. Accuracy is important. I just love this vision card quite a bit. Dexterity is also good. Slash attack resistance, piercing rate up. Uh, that's going to go up. And then slash attack up for wait, lightning and wind for these jobs. Which is pretty good. Not, not bad at all. Anyways, um, building vision cards is good. And then let me show you Trust Runes. So Trust Runes is, I would say, simultaneously an early game system and a late game system. There is a pretty big difference between in-game Trust Runes and what I think you should do at the very beginning. Now, you're going to be able to farm up to purple. And because this is like my first day of farming Trust Runes for this account... I blew out all my energy just farming up some purples and had to shift to blues and even greens at certain times. But essentially, these are kind of the best I could do. You'll notice they're, they're level one. I didn't even bother leveling them, even though I'll probably level these purples just because of how many materials we have for that. 
the the bump to stats for like purple and and sub yellow stuff is not great especially uh in relation to the amount of resources you're spending on it um but it would it, it would help it would help um and again those resources are common enough that you don't really feel like you're wasting them at least not on the purples but you'll see that i'm trying to match these up and what i'm trying to go for here is this set bonus um, these are going to add a little bit to the stats. You can see, even though they're arguably crap, they have added uh, an amount to the stats. You know, like all of these four stats all came from the trust runes. These came just from the trust runes. This came just from the trust runes. All but 10 of the crit of eight came from the trust runes. So you see it kind of builds up the stats across the board. Um, but mainly you're going for these guys. And... Whether you have green, whether you have purple, whether you have pink, the set bonuses are the same. Just get three of the same, you get the set bonuses. Um, agility only exists on this side uh, for yellow and up. Um, it is a really versatile set, especially if the card already has agility. Stacking that higher would be a great way to go. Um, elemental resistances are kind of future-proof in a way. I, I don't know. I don't see as many elemental resistance units, or I don't see... An I, there's setup required. Whereas slash attack resistance penetration and defense penetration, units with that kind of stuff are a lot more common, and they have it coming into the fight. You know, they don't need to buff. They don't need to set it up. They don't need to debuff you. Because what if that debuff hits the wrong person? And now you can't break my elemental resistance. And I have high... But anyways, um, I, I'm saying that the, the HP is a good all-around choice. I would also make strong arguments, especially for this one, uh, for defense. If you get a, a def, uh, one of these stats that is 10 or 11 or above, you should probably build that for that. It's going to give you a lot more defense. It's going to get you to like 23 on this with an additional 3 down here that will stack with anything. But also, and this is becoming more and more important, 10% healing power up for either one of those. See, for AP, we're getting AP, max AP up and AP cost rate down 10. So since this doesn't like generate AP like bells, I wanted to give it a little bit of AP. I figured that would, these two would be really general just so he can use it on really anything he wants. This one is a little bit more for attacker. There were a lot of attackers on the team, so I decided to throw some attack on it. <laughs> oh God, doesn't really reflect over here terribly well. <laughs> Uh, the, these, I might actually, like, re-roll their stats a little bit since there's kind of an obvious thing I want for them. Um, but, you know, we've got our HP set over here again because it's really general uh, for the attack. We're getting attack up 10, defense piercing rate up 10. Uh, what else? I did bells, I think. Yeah, a little further away. So these are the four I prioritized. And, you know, here we are. Um, so those are kind of the things that you'll want to do within the first couple days of playing the game. Um, another common mistake that I see people making, I mean, especially right now, not keeping your barracks full. And, well, we are saving for Sephiroth and his VC. We have what we need to be able to do that right now. So I could stand to invest just a little bit more in the barracks, I think. Let's go up another 5,000. Because you probably want to get this good enough, if you're really trying <laughs> trying to uh, try hard, uh, you want to get this long enough to last while you're asleep. I think it's the, the early goal. And ultimately, when you fully max this, you can get it for like 25 hours, so you're only doing it once per day. Because lower hassle means higher consistency. The more likely you are to actually do it, you know? So. Oh, the uh, the mistake that people make, though. My bad. The mistake that people make, though, is that the game starts you in JP. And uh, this is a terrible way. Look at this. Look at it. Compared to the amount of... Do you know how long she would have to sit in the barracks? I don't even want to do the math. It would just take forever. To build JP this way. It's not efficient. And right now we're just getting so many shards this way. It's awesome. 
and it is also the only way to get shards for a limited unit off of their banner. Yes, there are other ways right now to get Tifa shards, including... He probably hasn't pulled the tickets yet. Let me make sure we get tickets for the day. These two are, are well. Actually, MR is fine. SR, no, just just don't, just don't. It's not. Mm -mm. Don't waste your viz. Oh, we got that one. Okay, cool beans. Just remember to get the tickets next time, buddy. Um, but I think that's about it. Even if you lose, there is about 100 viz per week just for having competed in Arena in the previous week. So every week, you want to get a fight in on Monday. It is Monday. Oh, you have an you have an ice. Ooh, you have a water unit too. Well, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> this team is really about the best I could build, but I hopefully the recent changes have made it a bit stronger. Although I think maybe I should try out the PvP team while I'm here. Although, I mean, it's not on the, the guild battle map, so it's not a great test. Basically, I'm running uh, Prince Mont instead of Glaciella. <clears throat> and I'm running Mont with... Oh... It's like, how do you hit us from here? Yeah, that. Um, I'm running... I'm not running Glaciella. And I'm running... Uh, Kingmont with Ninja. Um, hopefully to get some hate down on him. But he doesn't really have to run... Arguably, Ninja probably isn't a good idea even for this. Um, I probably don't have to give him hate down. But I'm giving him Shikuchi. So anyways, on the current map, my idea is to put um, Kilfay and Prince Mont on either side of King Mont, but give King Mont higher movement. Okay, wait. Oh, oh no, that's the wrong Mont to be taking that hit. What? What? Oh, wow. This must be a new player that hasn't done their job board because there is... Uh, well, this is an LB. He probably didn't power up. That means he probably didn't power up this LB, but they stack, actually. So this is going to reduce my water resistance another 20. Did that even do damage? Look, this is the difference between a day one account that did their job board and their trust rune sets and one that didn't. Because that should have bodied... Fuck. Okay. Now I'm definitely curious. Because uh, this formation is going to work out a little bit different. But there's like a trench. So uh, the theory is that Prince Mont, or King Mont is going to get stuck... And Prince Mont isn't going to run forward as much as he can because he's going to start running into opposition. So King Mont, hopefully with hate down, is running in here after Prince Mont has taunting bladed people. And he's kind of attacking with impunity. And Prince Mont, because arguably Prince Mont is the more durable of the two units at this point. Um, Prince Mont is actually functioning as the tank. Whereas I'm trying to build Kingmont to be more of a brawler slash, well, slash brawler. Um, but like a uh, slash to buffer is, is the thing I'm thinking about here. Okay. Ooh. Oh. That that was not a day one player, I'll tell you that. Uh 
Ooh, okay. So since these aren't... This might actually be a more challenging match than the last one. Even though they're lower level, they may have actually built out their job boards. That first match, the, the way they were doing damage really screams to me. These are level 99 units that I pulled and didn't actually put any effort into building. Like... Moore should have had more abilities that she... She should have had buffs and stuff. She shouldn't have had to run out and use her limit burst like that. I'm not saying she wouldn't use her limit burst early on by any means. I'm saying that she would have had other options than doing that. But I guess we'll know when damage start. Well, he didn't get Cloud Sword, which might not be a good indication... But my dude has clearly pulled two Final Fantasy VII units. Like, this guy clearly came back for Final Fantasy VII and pulled hard. In fact, potentially so hard that, <laughs> that you may not have the viz to actually build these units, hence their current power. Oh, you gotta hate it when you get dodged by, <laughs> by King Mont. Oh, boy. Well, I'll have to tell uh, I'll have to tell Frenchie that we we have a winning streak in arena now. <laughs> Sweet. We'll screen cap that for him. And I'm not saying that we're going to become arena champs anytime soon, but hey. It's, it's, it's all right. But, uh, all that being said, I think you should understand a lot better how to deal with being a new player. Oh, oh shit, hold up. Sweet. Let me refill these barracks. Okay, I will come back to that in a minute. Guild battle. Medinia, okay. Mm, they're on a win streak. Well, not a streak necessarily. They lost their last match, but I'm doing pretty good. They do daily alternations, it seems. So... Okay. Let's do it. <clears throat> YOLO. First team, let's go. So just a little bit of information on this team. The reason this team is so tanky <clears throat> is that they have abnormally high earth resistance. They also have pretty good defense across the board, and that only gets better, all of that only gets better with 
Helena's buffing. So, even though they definitely have a disadvantage in terms of, like, raw stats, raw power, it's really hard to counter that. Now, Oberon is not a terrible... He's not backbreaking for me. Absolutely. Um, his, his LB does reduce all elemental resistances by 20, which isn't that bad because we're raising it with this buff by 25. So I'm still up five for my starting position after the buff, reapplying the buff can, and here we go, um, can actually mitigate that. So those two units are now going to be around, uh, Maybe like 35 to 75 defense in addition to maybe 90%, 90, 90 something uh, earth resistance as well. The things that this team actually does a lot worse against though is really heavy evasion Usually I don't have to worry about evasion too bad unless they're running multiple evasion units because then they've probably spent a lot more uh, effort in their VCs towards evasion. Whereas a team like this just having Catone, it wouldn't make sense for them to invest that hard in essentially just the single unit. So I can kind of count on being able to hit them and being able to just kind of tank it out. The uh, the thing the other thing that can screw with me, but usually we can tank through it, is um, Queen Masheri's limit break, because it's a thirty eight percent Earth uh, resistance reduction. That is considerably higher than the buff. Even I think the buff wouldn't fully mitigate that. So it does leave us a bit weaker, but the thing that this team has going for it is how terribly high its base uh, resistances are. So Mashiri by herself, just like kind of a Zazan by himself can't break the back of this team, or Mashiri by herself can't break the back of this team either. Although she is just uh, functionally easily able to do more damage than most units to this team... Um, because her damage is based in spirit and I have heavily invested in courage removal and defense because earth units are very physical and very uh, courage based for survivability. So I'm really not specced to handle magic based teams. But in theory, if it weren't for that, I would be able to because my elemental resistance would be high enough. But having to deal with both of those problems simultaneously is a big issue, is a bit of an issue. Um, so like Mashiri and Kilfay is a team that I also avoid. And then Mashiri and two evasion units is just like the worst of all worlds. <laughs> but otherwise this team is remarkably consistent and I'm almost surprised that we didn't lose a unit in round one but this is kind of these are like the comps that i won against really consistently in arena so i am not at all surprised um on a shorter map like on the arena map i'm not running magic barrier by the way i figured that will help uh the magic matchup a bit but I have the room to cast that here. And I don't mind slowing him down a little bit to allow Sorel to catch up, because usually Sorel catching up the affinity bonus uh, gets him a turn right away so they don't really bunch up at all. And he, uh, in both of these matches, he's consistently gone for the unit in third while getting his hate off. Oddly enough, consistently in both matches, the Noctis came to the uh, spiritual aid of the evasion unit as well. Okay. 
I wonder if this Noctis has uh, good wind resistance on him. I'll have to check his team after this. Okay. It's a little bit late in the game to be doing this, but this might help you. Ho ho ho! Not with that damage, it won't. Ooh! <laughs> I don't get to see her use Dispel very often. I thought it might be interesting to have her play a more supportive role in this game. But yeah, that's how to get six stars against a rank 181 guild with MR units. So, with that being said, I think we've done everything that this video could possibly do. Um, oh, it doesn't tell me how long the recording is. It's almost certainly quite a long recording, and I haven't had a crash yet. The, uh, the load times aren't that bad. I mean, this is, yeah, this is pretty close to, to how my phone be. So with all of that being said, I'll see you in the next one.